A tercio Spanish pronunciation, te theta jo, third, or tercio español, Spanish third, was a Spanish infantry organization during the time that Habsburg Spain dominated Europe in the early modern period. The tercio was an administrative unit with command of up to 3,000 soldiers, subdivided originally into ten, later twelve compañías, made up of pikemen, swordsmen and arquebusiers or musketeers. These companies were deployed in battle and were further subdivided into units of 30 soldiers. These smaller units could be deployed individually or brought together to form what were sometimes called Spanish squares. These powerful infantry squares were also much used by other European powers, especially the Imperial Army of the Holy Roman Empire. The care that was taken to maintain a high number of old soldiers veterans in the units, and their professional training, together with the particular personality imprinted on them by the proud hidalgos of the lower nobility that nurtured them, made the tercios for a century and a half the best infantry in Europe. Moreover, the tercios were the first to efficiently mix pikes and firearms. Tercio companies dominated European battlefields in the 16th century and the first half of the 17th century and are seen by historians as a major development of early modern combined arms warfare. History The use of mast pikes by Spanish armies began in the Granada War 1482 During the Italian Wars, under the direction of the Spanish general Gonzalo Fernández de Córdoba, called the Great Captain, the system of combined groups of pikemen, arquebusiers and swordsmen developed. The conflicts at the end of the 15th century and early 16th century evolved into a tactically unique combination of combined arms centered around armored infantry. To counter the French heavy cavalry, a Colonel C could theoretically have up to 6,000 men, but by 1534 this had been reduced to the Tercio with a maximum of 3,000. Armies using Tercio companies of up to 300 generally intended to field them in brigades of at least three, with one in the front and two behind. The rearward formations echeloned off on either side so that a unit called a coronilla, Colonel C, commanded by a colonel, was created. The Spanish tercios rarely had more than 1,500 men. They were called tercios, meaning thirds, because they were, in theory, made up originally of one-third pikemen, one-third swordsmen, and one-third of firearms. In time, the number of swordsmen was reduced. The only tercio to have 3,000 men was the tercio de galeras or the galleys. Tercio, dedicated only for deployment in galleys and galleons and specialized in naval warfare and amphibious operations. It was assigned in 1537 by royal assent to the Spanish fleets in the Mediterranean and is the ancestor of today's Spanish Navy Marines. <laughs> Composition and characteristics Although other powers adopted the Tercio formation, their armies fell short of the fearsome reputation of the Spanish, who possessed a corps of professional soldiers, which gave them an edge that was hard for other states to match. That army was further supplemented by an army of different nations, a reference to the fact that many of the troops were mercenaries from Germany Landsnecht, and the Italian and Walloon territories of the Spanish Netherlands, as was characteristic of European warfare before the levies of the Napoleonic Wars. In the 16th and 17th centuries, however, the core of Spanish armies were formed by Spanish subjects, who were frequently praised by others for their cohesiveness, superiority in discipline and overall professionalism. Formations Within the Tercio, ranks of pikemen arrayed themselves together into a hollow pike square quadro with swordsmen, typically equipped with a short sword, a buckler, and javelins. Inside, as the firearm rose in prominence, the swordsmen declined and were phased out. The arquebusiers later, musketeers, were usually split up in several mobile groups called sleeves mangas and deployed relative to the quadro, typically with one manga at each corner. By virtue of this combined arms approach, the formation simultaneously enjoyed the staying power of its pike-armed infantry, the ranged firepower of its arquebusiers, as well as the ability to conduct assaults with sword and buckler men. 
In addition to its inherent ability to repulse cavalry and other units along its front, the long-range firepower of its arquebusiers could also be easily reorganized to the flanks, making it versatile in both offensive and defensive evolutions, as demonstrated by the success of the Tercios at the Battle of Pavia 1525. Groups of tercios were typically arrayed in dragon-toothed formation staggered, with the leading edge of one unit level with the trailing edge of the preceding unit, see the similar hedgehog defense concept. This enabled enfilade lines of fire and somewhat defilated the army units themselves. Odd units alternated with even units, respectively one forward and one back, providing gaps for an unwary enemy to enter and outflank itself, where it would become subjected to the combined direct and raking crossfire from the guns of three separate tercios. From their inception, tercio formations were meant to coordinate their field operations with cavalry. Topic. Leadership of the tercio Mirroring military organization today, the Tercio was led by a maestre de campo appointed by the king as the commanding officer and guarded by eight halberdiers. Assisting him was the sergeant major and a ferrier major in charge of logistics and armaments, with companies led by a captain, also of royal appointment, with an ensign in charge of the company color. Companies had sergeants, furrers and corporals in them. The sergeants served as seconds in command of the company and brought the captain orders to his soldiers, the furs were at orders to provide the necessary weapons and munitions, as well as additional men to the companies, and the corporals, who led groups of twenty-five similar to today's platoons, were always in obedience to the captain's orders and brought to him any possible cases of disorder in the unit. Each company had corps of drums made up of drummers and fifers, sounding duty calls in battle, with the drum major and fife major being provided by the Tercio headquarters. The tercio staff included a medical component made up of a professional medic, a barber, and surgeons, chaplains and preachers, and a judicial unit, plus military constables enforcing order. They all reported to the maestre de campo directly. Organization <inaudible> 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 Tercios that initially served in Italy and the Spanish Netherlands were organized into ten companies of three hundred led by captains, in which eight were pikemen's companies and two were of arquebusers. The companies were later reduced to 250 strong units. During the actions in the Netherlands the tercios were reorganized into three colonelcies colonelias, led by colonels the predecessor of today's battalions, but subdivided into the same twelve companies of 250, two of arquebusiers and ten of pikemen. Colonels were also of royal appointment. The colonelcies were composed of a HQ unit and four companies each. Staff <laughs> 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 Maestre de Campo, Colonel Coronel, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Sargento Mayor, Major Ferial Mayor, Quartermaster Capellan Mayor, Chaplain Pifano Mayor, Fife Major Tambor Mayor, Drum Major Topic. Company Topic. One Capitan, Captain one Alferez, Ensign Abanderado, Standard Bearer Sargento, Sergeant Capellan, Chaplain Ferial, Quartermaster Tambor, Drummer Pifano, Pfeiffer Barbero, Barber Surgeon Cabos de Esquadra, Corporals 150 Picaros, Pikemen 100 Arcabuceros, Arquebusiers later Musketeers 40 Kosalites, sword and buckler men. Topic. Tercios and the Spanish Empire Topic. Tercios were deployed all over Europe under the Habsburg rulers. They were made up of volunteers and built up around a corps of professional soldiers and were highly trained. Sometimes later tercios did not stick to the all-volunteer model of the regular imperial Spanish army. When the Habsburg king Philip II found himself in need of more troops, he raised a tercio of Catalan criminals to fight in Flanders, a trend he continued with most Catalan criminals for the rest of his reign. 
A large proportion of the Spanish army, which by the later half of the 16th century was entirely composed of tercio units, tercio of Savoy, tercio of Sicily, was deployed in the Netherlands to quell the increasingly difficult rebellion against the Habsburgs. Ironically, many units of Spanish tercios became part of the problem rather than the solution when the time came to pay them. With the Spanish coffers depleted by constant warfare, units often mutinied. For example, in April 1576, just after winning a major victory, unpaid tercios mutinied and occupied the town of Antwerp, threatening to sack it if their demands were not met. Completely reliant on his troops, the Spanish commander could only comply. Topic. Specialized tercios Topic. On 24 February 1537 the Tercio de Galeris was created, considered the first marine unit in history. Today, the Real Infanteria de Marina Spanish Navy Marines consider themselves heirs of this unit. There were other units of Navy Tercios with names such as Tercio Viejo de Armada Old Navy Tercio or Tercio Fijo de la Mar de Naples Permanent Tercio of the Sea of Naples. Such specialized units were needed for the protracted war with the Ottoman Empire over the entire Mediterranean Sea. Topic. Naming conventions Topic. Most tercios were given names according to the place where they were cantoned or first deployed, thus they were Tercio de Sicilia, de Lombardia, de Naples Tercio of Sicily, of Lombardy, of Naples, and so on. Some other tercios were named for their commanding officer, like the Tercio de Moncada for its commander Miguel de Moncada whose most famous soldier was Miguel de Cervantes. Some tercios were named by their main function, such as Galeras or Viejo de Armada. Some others were named for their recruitment area. Topic. Colors Topic. Topic. The Portuguese Turcos Topic. Portugal adopted the Spanish model of Tercio in the 16th century, calling it Turco. In 1578, under the reorganization of the Portuguese army conducted by King Sebastian, four Turcos were established, the Turco of Lisbon, the Turco of Estremadura, the Turco of Alentejo, and the Turco of Algarve. Each had about 2,000 men, formed into eight companies. The infantry of the army organized for the expedition to Morocco in 1578 was made up of these four Turcos together with the Turco of the Adventurers totally made up of young nobles, three mercenary Turcos the German, the Italian, and the Castilian, and a unit of elite sharpshooters of the Portuguese garrison of Tangier. This was the Portuguese force which fought the Battle of Alcacer Quibir. While united with the Spanish crown, from 1580 to 1640, Portugal kept the organization of Turcos, although the army had declined. Several Spanish tercios were sent to Portugal, the principal of them, the Spanish infantry tercio of the city of Lisbon, occupied the main fortresses of the Portuguese capital. The Turco of the navy of the crown of Portugal, the ancestor of the modern Portuguese marines, was created in this period. After the restoration of Portuguese sovereignty in 1640, the army was reorganized by King John IV of Portugal. The Turcos remained the basic units of the Portuguese infantry. Two types of Turcos were organized: the paid Turcos, first-line permanent units, and the auxiliary Turcos, second-line militia units. Portugal won the restoration war with these Turcos. At the end of the 17th century, the Turcos were already organized as modern regiments. However, the first line Turcos were only transformed into regiments in 1707, during the War of the Spanish Succession, after the Spanish Tercios were transformed into regiments in 1704. The second line Turcos were only transformed into militia regiments in 1796. Some of the old Turcos are direct ancestors of modern regiments of the Portuguese army. Topic. Obsolescence. Topic. The first challenge to the dominance of the Tercios came at the Battle of Newport 1600. The victor of Newport, the Dutch stadtholder Maurice, Prince of Orange, believed he could improve on the Tercio by combining its methods with the organization of the Roman Legion. These shallower linear formations brought a greater proportion of available guns to bear on the enemy simultaneously. 
The result was that the tercios at Newport were badly damaged by the weight of Dutch firepower. Yet the Spanish army very nearly succeeded in spite of internal dissensions that had compromised its regular command. The Eighty Years' War in the Low Countries continued to be characterized by sieges of cities and forts, while field battles were of secondary importance. Maurice's reforms did not lead to a revolution in warfare, but he had created an army that could meet the Tercios on an even basis and that pointed the way to future developments. During the Thirty Years' War 1618 tercio formations began to be tested in more linear formations by the brilliant Swedish soldier king Gustavus Adolphus. Eventually, however, the tried and true Spanish tactics defeated the supposedly invincible Swedish army at the Battle of Nordlingen 1634. .Throughout its history, the Tercio's form and composition was never static as it evolved to meet new challenges. Tercio formations employed by well-trained troops with good cavalry support continued to win major battles such as Wimpfen 1622, Fleurus 1622, Breda 1624, Nordlingen 1634, Thienville 1639, Huncourt 1641 and Valenciennes 1656. It was not until Roqua 1643 that the Spanish Tercio's reputation in major battles was shattered. Even then, the Roqua defeat was precipitated by the collapse of the supporting cavalry rather than the failure of the Tercios themselves, which had come close to besting the opposing infantry. Tercios continued to win important battles for a time after Roqua and even after the Thirty Years' War, but were already greatly modified from their older forms. By then, improvements in firearms and field artillery had given the new linear style a decided advantage. In response, the later 17th century tercios adopted so much of the linear style's organization and tactics as to have little resemblance to the classic tercios of the previous century. In 1704, the Spanish tercios were transformed into regiments. <laughs> Famous battles Topic. Victories Topic. Pavia Mulberg Lepanto Siege of Paris Battle of the White Mountain Battle of Nordlingen Topic. Defeats Topic. Siege of Castelnuovo Siege of Kinsale Battle of Newport Roqua Topic See also Topic Spanish Empire Musketeer Military history Spanish Navy Marines units are called tercios The units of the modern Spanish Legion are also called tercios Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic <references>